everyone, it's the Jerkster here back for another video. Today, this is going to be a review of Shinmu 1 and 2. Now, I recently beat both of these games and plat got the platinum for each one. Um, and I just wanted to give a review on this game for a lot of people who probably never played it uh, back in the day on the Dreamcast. Now, this was originally a Dreamcast release. I, I remember back in the day... I'd see it advertised that this grand adventure as an RPG and you could do all these things and and it looked really cool and I always wanted to play it but I was one of those people that just never had a Dreamcast. I had a chance to get a Dreamcast at one time but I went ahead and got a GameCube instead. I don't know if that was necessarily the right choice at the time or not but I went with a GameCube. Um, so I never did get to play these till they were, uh, released in HD, um, which is, it's really cool to finally get to play a piece of gaming culture that I never got to experience, but, um, and overall I think it was an enjoyable package because you get two games and you get a lot of hours of gameplay, but there are a lot of things that we need to touch on, um, <clears throat> about each game that may hinder new players from being able to experience if you experience it. If you were someone who played it back in the day and want to experience in HD with trophies, you're going to automatically love it because you were a fan of it from the Dreamcast. So this review really isn't for you. This review is for newcomers and from the point of view of a newcomer. Now, I've been playing video games since the NES and SNES, and, you know, I've been playing along video games for a long time, so I appreciate older games and what they do, and, you know, I think a lot of gamers these days, they look at old games and go, Ew, that's crappy graphics, and they don't really play them. They don't play them and appreciate them for what they are. Um, and old games back in the day, they did not hold your hand like games do today. They're pretty brutal, and uh, a lot of those NES and SNES games were made difficult so that people wouldn't return them, you know, because they wanted people to keep them and play them for a long time, so they made the difficulty really high. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, on to Shinmu 1. We're going to break these games up into reviews in one video, so this video might be a little long. Shinmu 1, pretty much the baseline of the story is you play as a boy whose dad is killed and you want to go on a mission of revenge. So, you know, this game is, is called an RPG, but I don't really feel like it's an RPG. It, it feels more like an exploration adventure game with some combat to it, especially the first Shinmu game. In that game, you, you get to interact with a lot of items. A lot of times, they don't really do anything. And, and you know, the interesting thing about these games is every single NPC is, is voice acted. There, there is voice acting for every single character that you talk to in this game. I'm sure some of the, the, the actors are reused for a lot of these NPCs. But at the time when this game came out... It was considered a technical marvel because there wasn't games on the market that looked this good, had a complete voice acted cast, you know, day and night, weather effects, being able to interact with tons of items, go into almost every building, you know, have little mini games inside a video game because there's classic Sega uh, arcade games that you could play in this game. Pretty much Shinmu is the precursor to the Yakuza series. And I believe if it wasn't for these two games, a lot of the things that we have in gaming today may not have came forth or may not be the way they are. So this game, this game is a piece of gaming history. And I believe everybody needs to experience this and play it. You need to. Now... That aside, because it's an old game made in 1999, there are some issues that will hinder new players. 
The controls for the main character, R Ryu, R Ryu it's, it's hard to pronounce his name. It's a little stiff. It's not tank control bad, but he just doesn't turn the way that you want. And in the first game, it's more of an issue because you get some mini games where you're you're driving a, a forklift and I swear that is so frustrating because you can't turn right and and the way they made the NPCs because there's a bunch of NPCs walking around when you're driving it they're literally like giant roadblocks you they don't get out of the way like they would in GTA and move they're all on an on rails pattern that constantly walks back and forth so if you hit them, you literally just stop. And it, it's kind of annoying. Um, but uh, also, there's a, there's a lot of other things in the game that are kind of annoying. Like in the first game, you you have to... You, you don't have a mini-map, okay? So there's little maps in the area that you have to go up to, click on to kind of find out where you are. There's no cruiser that guides you to the location that you have. You have a little, you have a little diary, a little journal that Rayo keeps notes in that helps him try to figure out where he needs to go next. But the game, the first game, is so slow paced. You will spend so much time walking around, talking to people, trying to find out where to go, and a lot of times they don't tell you anything. So you end up talking to twenty or thirty NPCs when you really need to talk to specific ones. And it's a little confusing. Also, there's there's points in time in the game where, where you have to be at a certain place at a certain location. And other games, you would be able to just wait until that time and then go to that. But in this game, it's like you go to this location... You can't interact with it, so you have to come back the next day. You come back the next day, and they tell you to come back tomorrow. So now, it, it, it's like a frustrating mess. You wasted this whole day, and there's really nothing for you to do. Also, the, the story in the first game is a really slow-paced, and there's not much combat. There's a full combat system with combos, and there's other move scrolls that you can get, but... The first game is not very filled with a lot of combat, so a lot of times, you know, it feels like the combat is underused. I would say, personally, in my opinion, the first game, because it was really frustrating at certain points, it had some mini-games and things in it that will literally just irritate you, for stuff that you have to get right, and if you don't, you have to constantly go through it again, um, also, there's some bugs and glitches where you'll get stuck in first-person mode. There was this bug I got at the end of the game where I had to learn a move from a master. And the thing about this game that really irritates me is they tell you to, they want you to practice this move, but they don't tell you the buttons you need to push in order to do the move like you, like they would in a training, uh, training simulator in a fighting game. They'll tell you the move at the top and you keep doing it till you get it. They don't tell you that, so you have to just figure it out, which is kind of annoying. But, after that, you kind of go into a fight, and then, you know, the ending happens or whatnot. But, um, <clears throat> the thing about that is the ending, after the credits rolled, you're supposed to save your clear game file, which lets you transfer it to Shamu 2. Well, a glitch ended up happening, and it totally skipped over letting me save my clear game file. So I had to play the ending part of the game again. And in the first Shimu game, you can't skip cutscenes. So you have to watch this same stuff over again. And when you're in the game, there's a lot of times where you'll mess up and you have to repeat the same thing again, watching the same cutscene again, and it literally gets on your nerves. So if you don't have patience or you get easily angered, which I really did get really frustrated at these games at times, you might be deterred from playing Shinmu. Um... I don't personally feel like I'll play the first game again because there was just so much frustrating moments, wasn't enough combat, the story didn't flow that well, but it's an old game, so you can't really 
hold it to the same standard of new games. But for me, playing from the perspective now, I appreciate Shimu. I enjoyed getting to play it. But I think the first game gets about a 6 from me. Just because <clears throat> they... They remastered in HD, they could have put some of the modern conveniences or some of the additional features in Shimu 2 into Shimu 1 to make it more accessible, but they didn't. They just updated the graphics a little bit and, you know, shipped it out on the disc. So, Shimu 1 gets a 6 for me. Now, Shinmu 2 corrects a lot of these issues. There's really no glitches, because uh, in the first Shimu game, I got a game save file corruption. If I wasn't already in the game at that time, I would have lost my whole save file. That would have really made me mad. <clears throat> but the glitches seem to be fixed. There is many maps now at the bottom of your screen. They kind of help, but the environments are so big you get kind of lost. Um, you can skip time. You can wait. The story is better. The voice acting is a little bit better. It's still kind of dumb at some times. There's more combat, new, better moves. It, it just feels like a better game overall. There are still some frustrating moments, like there's a later part of the game where you're running around apartment buildings, and they're all interconnected. There's like four or five buildings interconnected. And every single floor, there's like 13 floors, they all look the same. You literally get lost in there, and you don't know where to go. It drove me crazy for an hour. I was, like, screaming at my TV, What do I do? And it was, like, the most simplest thing. I just went the wrong way. And it literally drove me mad. Um, but it is a better game, by far. There's still little things in there. You know, Ryo still doesn't control the way you want and things like that. But it's definitely a better game. Um, I would probably get it about an 8 out of 10. Um, for a total package, getting two games and everything, I think it would round out for a total package of both of these games. For me, probably about 7 to an 8. It, w it was a good time. It was nice getting the Platinums, but it was really frustrating, and the first game kind of lowers the score a bit for me. But for an overall package... Um, and I really love some of the characters in the second game. Really love some of them. Ren and, and the girls are so hot in that game. Oh my gosh, there's a couple females in that game. Bro, you're going to like the girls in the second game, trust me. They're, they're pretty freaking hot. Um, so I would, uh, I would say overall 2 definitely shoots the, the package score up and I'll give it around an 8 as a total package. But individually... 6 for Shinmu 1, 8 for Shinmu 2. But that's my personal opinion. You know, nobody get angry at me or hate me for it. But that's just my personal opinion of these games and reviews. I look forward to the third one. The second one, you know, that cliffhanger ending. I swear, if I would have played that back in the Dreamcast days and I had to wait as long as I did now, I would probably be really irritated. But I can't wait for Shimmer 3. I probably might get it on release. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that's it for my review of this. I know it took a long time, but covering two games in one video, it's going to take a while. So uh, leave your comments, thoughts down below. What you think about Shimmer and these two games? Are you excited to play it? Have you played it? What's your opinion on them? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know. Until next time, this is Jokester. Sign down. See ya.